Good morning. Hello and, and welcome on behalf of College of DuPage, Interim President Dr. Brian Caputo and our Board of Trustees, we welcome you to today's Community Leadership Breakfast. And what an impressive gathering this is, leaders from uh, the business community, nonprofit sector, educators, elected officials, it's, it's just fantastic. So I uh, just want to start by saying thank you all for coming out this morning. Uh, my name is Dan Binder. I'm the station manager of WDCB. That's the radio station located right here at College of DuPage. In fact, right here in this building in the Student Resource Center. And from here at the college, we broadcast to an audience of more than 150,000 weekly listeners across Chicagoland, more than 10,000 online listeners across the country and around the world. We uh, bring those listeners jazz music along with blues, folk, and other uh, various musical art forms and arts and community coverage as well. I'll be your MC for today's event. With us today are members of our Board of Trustees here at the College of DuPage who work tirelessly to ensure that COD provides each and every student with a high quality education at an affordable cost. Board of Trustees, please stand as we acknowledge your hard work and commitment to College of DuPage. Thank you. And today would not have been possible without the input of our very talented students from the COD Jazz Ensemble, Michael Caroso and Alejandra Hernandez. Would you also please stand? <laughs> Michael, Alejandra, thanks. Wonderful music. We'd also like to recognize the College of DuPage Foundation Board, as, as well as various elected officials. Those elected officials and Foundation Board members, please stand and thank you for your service and dedication to our community. In just a few minutes, we will welcome Interim President Dr. Brian Caputo to the stage. But first, as the leading community college in the state and one of the largest employers in DuPage County, it is now my distinct pleasure to invite you to watch our new video outlining the many accomplishments that we've achieved together. A community is not defined merely by its boundaries. It is more than a collection of people living and working in the same area. A successful community is built on relationships and partnerships and a common desire to thrive together. Since 1967, College of DuPage has sought to meet the changing needs of our stakeholders. Committed to providing the highest quality education at affordable prices, along with economic resources and cultural experiences, College of DuPage is at the heart of this community. The continued economic health of our district is key, and College of DuPage offers leadership and support where economic development leads to economic impact. With exciting new initiatives and the continued support of small business we've offered for decades. We've been a strong supporter of small business for a very long time. We have been the coach and advisor to them building this expertise they may have to go and bring it into a successful business. Coming here, meeting up with the faculty members at COD, with the SBDA, has made me realize that, hey, I have somebody watching over my back. They care for you and they care for your business. So you're in safe hands, and that's what I love about this. As the largest community college in the state, we understand the importance of inspiring tomorrow's leaders. College of DuPage provides affordable, accessible higher education, allowing students to pursue their dreams here in the place they call home. It really is a college for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're un you come here undecided, you don't know what you want to do. You could really find your passion here. I enjoy being in a community. I like working. I like having a job. And so the ability to have a life outside of school and have a life in school really appealed to me. It's a fabulous school and a fabulous program, faculty and educational opportunities and learning. You have access to all those things and your future. You have a home base that you will always come back to in your community. They gave me the tools and the experiences I need to feel empowered.
a solid community comes together, capitalizing on its strengths to help those in need of assistance. Students and employees volunteer their time and talents, pooling resources and working cooperatively to give back. We are a community, so if we are successful by helping one another, then the whole community is successful. When you give back to your community, it not only it not only improves the community for yourself, but for others, and that's really important. There's a lot of different types of people at COD, and I think it's really important for us to get together, and COD does a really, really great job of getting people involved. COD Cares is a wonderful volunteer organization that supports us all the time. They've done uh, toy drives, uh, gifts for the children for Christmas. They've done food sorting. The People's Resource Center appreciates College of DuPage, period. They have been a great partner for us over the years. Always responsive to the needs of the district, College of DuPage enriches lives through relationships with the community. Thank you for being our partner. College of DuPage. It's a very special place, an extraordinary place, one where dreams come true, or at least they start to come true. It was certainly true for my family. In fact, my wife is here. Um, very, uh, very gr grateful to her. She's uh, been with me through thick and thin, proofread a lot of papers. She's the one that should have the PhD instead of me. <clears throat> Our um, eldest son came to the College of DuPage, graduated in 2013, went on to ISU for a short period of time, and then went on to UIC. The College of DuPage is where he started on his path of becoming uh, an Army officer. That was his dream. Our second son uh, came to the College of DuPage for a year, transferred out, um, is now doing exceptionally well in the trades. Our youngest, our daughter, she's going to be graduating in about nine days from the College of DuPage with an associate's degree. Not exactly sure where she's going to land next, probably somewhere in the arts. But all of these are very different paths. They all came through the College of DuPage. I'm a proud father to be sure, but uh, the point here is that this is the place where you can explore whatever path it is that you want to explore. We honor different paths. This is what it's all about here, student success. Over the last year or so, we, weren't, we were a little bit out of alignment in terms of what we, what we wanted to do and how we wanted to get there. So in January, the senior leadership of the college came together and tried to discern what is it we're really trying to do here. It's student success. It's all about the students. Seems simple, but it needed to be clarified. And what does student success mean to us? One, it means persistence. Going from one semester to the next, staying with us, and going from one year to the next, and staying with us until you get to the goal. Transfer, if that's appropriate. Transfer to a four-year institution. Also completion, whether that's a, one of our certificates, we have nearly 180 of them. One of our degrees, about 70 of them. A lot to offer here. Or employment, whether that's follow-on employment or enhanced employment beyond what, where the student is currently. Through us, through us, students can reach their goals. This is where I think we where we're going. I think that we need to be setting our sights on becoming the top community college across all of those dimensions that I just outlined. The number one, and the top 10% nationally. Why do I think that? Well, I think we've got a couple of things going for us. One is a program called Pathways that we've undertaken here on, on the campus. That is a program where we look to ramp students into the institution in a methodical manner without getting caught up in a lot of developmental courses, without getting caught up and getting confused in the admissions process, getting through our institution in a methodical manner that is by not getting off the path, not taking courses they don't need, 
getting to where they need to go and getting onto their destination institution, whether that's NIU, UIC, or um, Lewis University, wherever it is they want, want to go, and get them there as efficiently as possible. Now, for those of you that are in the audience here, they're from four-year schools, don't mean to offend you, but they need to come through us first, then they can come to you. <laughs> and there's a number, also, the other thing we have working in our favor in this regard is not only pathways, but our people. The people here are extraordinary. The talent that I see here is second to none. We have degreed professors in every classroom. There are no lecture halls here. And they're taught in, in groups of about 25 or so, no more than 25. And the other interesting thing about this is that there are studies that show if you go to a community college you are, and get a degree, you are more likely to finish with a bachelor's degree than if you go directly to a larger school. This is the place for success. And we need to use pathways, we need to use our people to get to these goals. We're doing pretty well in transfer, if you look at our statistics. Some of the others need some work. But with our faculty, staff, with our facilities and our resources, and the commitment and passion of this institution, we will get there, and I consider, I consider our faculty and staff is a bit to be a bit our secret weapon, if you will. We're going to get there. The chairman of the, our board and I, as long, along with Mary Ann Millish, our long-term um, long director of legislative relations, she's retiring soon. This is breaking my heart, but she's going to do it. Um, we went and met in D.C. with some of our federal legislators, our senators, their staffs, the congressmen whose districts overlap ours. And there were a couple of takeaways that we got from that, that, uh, that group. We, they asked us, one, can you help us develop more STEM cap capacity in our, in our workforce? And can you simply develop the workforce? That is, we have a gap between what students, what workers can do and what we need done. There is a gap, and I think you hear about that in the news all the time. And the federal legislators were looking to us, community colleges in general, but the College of Page in particular to fill that gap. So one of the ways we're going to do this is STEM education. That's not to the exclusion of the liberal arts, and we'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But in terms of STEM education, what I've asked the, I'm asking the board to do is approve a $400,000 provision in next year's budget to create an enhanced STEM facility on our campus. The facility will have the ability to provide 270 degree working spaces, automated electronic working spaces, automated reality and virtual reality in the classroom. I think that once this happens, I'm going to have a problem. The problem is that our faculty is going to want more of these things, and we're going to be spending more on that, but we'll deal with that another time. We're going to get it started, and I think that once we get this going, the high schools are going to figure this out and they're going to want to use it. We're going to get their students, and that's okay because we're going to reel them all in because this is where they're going to need to go to get the best education. Um, so just imagine this virtual reality situation. Putting on goggles and learning about Mars, for example, while a professor is telling you, showing you as if you were on Mars what this rock formation means. Or for application for the liberal arts. You're in a situation where there's an a English professor that's talking about literature. You've got your goggles on, and as if you are in the setting, and the professor is talking about the setting of that literature. The, I think that the implications for um, enhanced retention are enormous. Also, to mention, to mention um, liberal arts for a moment, yes, we want to emphasize STEM education, but that is not to the exclusion of the liberal arts. Liberal arts will always be relevant. We, I know those of you that are doing hiring, that have workers, you need workers that are able to communicate well, that understand historical context, that can critically analyze, that understand diversity. Liberal arts will always be uh, important, but STEM is right now something that's of need in our marketplace. Also, in, her, in terms of our STEM ev uh, emphasis, recently we hosted STEMCon, which, is an, which was an exhibition on campus in the PE Center attended by approximately 2,500 individuals that were uh, parents 
and students of all ages that were able to engage in STEM activities, see demonstrations, hands-on. It was a fabulous event. Got a lot of people on campus. Again, we want to reel them in because this is where they're going to get the best education. This strengthens our position as a leader in, in STEM. Also, as another example, we had some months ago uh, retired astronaut Mark Kelly come on campus. Distinguished career with NASA, 50 days in space, commander of two space shuttles. He came to and talked to our college community about STEM education in particular, but it was beyond that. He talked about his experience with leadership, how he learned to become a leader, and how he, how he overcame his own challenges in life. It was simply inspiring. There are so many success stories about our, our students. It's, it, I can only give you, a, give you a few here, but I think you need to hear some of these. And our successes are not just limited to STEM. Molly Langlotz. Molly was a high school dropout. The people who knew her told her she would not amount to much. But then she found the College of DuPage. She came to COD. She went through the high school equivalency program, got her GED. She enrolled in the college shortly, after, shortly afterwards. Came through our program, applied herself, straight A's. 4.0 grade point average. We recognized her as the outstanding graduate last year. She gave a commencement speech that brought the students, everyone in attendance, to their feet. Melissa Wang, another, another great example, music student. She won the 2019 Jack Stone Award for, in the outstanding composition by a community college student nationally. Her composition, down, right, up, and left, was a singular achievement. She started playing percussion in fifth grade. She came here to try to make sure she understood where she wanted to go in life. This year, she's going to, this year she's going to graduate with an Associate of Fine Arts degree. She wants to go on and earn a master's degree and teach in a high school or community college. The horticultural program. I spent some time with them recently. These are individuals that are incredibly passionate about what, what they do. 19 of our students went to a competition ranked third amongst all community colleges in the country. This, this competition enabled them to show what they know, and they did extremely well. This is a fast-growing program. It is filling a market need, and we are delivering this instruction in a state-of-the-art facility. The forensics team. Forensics has a long history of prominence and success on this campus. I had, a, had the opportunity with my wife to see, about, see them about four times this year. Absolutely inspiring. They took sixth in the national tournament, 55 teams, number six. 25 individual awards. One of those awards was given to our leader, our faculty leader of the program for her lifetime contribution to the field of forensics. They are absolutely phenomenal. In fact, I'm going to ask them to demonstrate their skills next Thursday to the Board of the Trustees. I'm captivated by, what, by when I watch them. And this is great preparation for a future career. I mentioned student success. Student success is what we consider to be our main thing, the thing that we focus on. It's not the only thing, but it's the main thing. One of the other two, I think, primary things we do is promote economic de uh, development in DuPage County. We take this very seriously. Here's a couple of examples of how we do it. One, Innovation DuPage, about ready to open later this month. It is a business training accelerator, incubator, training facility. We are trying to grow, help grow businesses in DuPage County, new and burgeoning businesses wanted to help, help them deliver more to benefit society. This is a partnership between higher education, some of the par partners are here in this room, uh, government, county, uh, DuPage County, Village of Glen Allen, and certain public sector, uh, private sector businesses, opening later this month. Stay tuned for more information on that. Also, Project Higher Ed, we're very proud of this program. Mentioned about what the, the legislators talked about, one, 
was STEM cap cap capacity. Two is workforce development. This is answering that call. We take this seriously. It's an earn and learn program, essentially apprenticeships. Businesses identify individuals whom they think have potential, but perhaps don't have the skills. We are organizing programs to make sure they get the skills. Um, our Vice President Linda Sands Van Kirk is heading up this program. What we do is we take a basic set of courses, four or so, has to have convey um, information such as uh, technical writing, that sort of thing, and then we layer on top of that skills that are specific for the business. In this case, manufacturing is the first, um, first group we're working on, a couple of cohorts with a group from Addison. Mayor Veenstra, are you here in the audience somewhere? There he is. Thank you for your um, support of this program. And Superintendent District 88, um, Scott Helton, are you here somewhere? Scott, I thought, yep, yeah, Scott, back. thank you. The two have been in instrumental in, in bringing this together, but this is just the first phase. We can, we can do more in this, in this realm in order to meet the need in the marketplace. And this program is essentially a stackable credential. If you get, will probably turn out to be 30 credits, we can, we can if, if desired, we can add more courses to that to help students get a, uh, an associate's degree. We're trying to develop the right talent here in DuPage County. Um, and again, this can be adapted for other things. For example, we've heard about needs in the banking, banking arena. We can develop something for, for, that, uh, for that field, for example. Student success, economic development. The next other thing we do is we want to be a center for art, the center. We want to advance our, our position as the center for art and culture in the western suburbs. And we've got a great start. We've got a great start. Um, we've always done amazing things at the Mackinich Arts Center. But as some of you have heard, we're bringing an exhibit by Frida Kahlo to the campus next summer. Diana Martinez, our very gifted director of the, uh, of, the, of the MAC, is going to tell us more about this in a minute. But I'm going to steal a little bit of her thunder. We are bring, bringing. 26 of her original artworks to this campus valued at over $100 million. This is going to be an amazing exhibit for the community. It is going to put us on the map more so than we already are in this regard. Also 150 very amazing photos. Um, and to do this, we are going to expand the art gallery. Um, we're going to add about 1,000 square feet to the north. We'd want to do more if we could, but given the time constraints, that's what we're going to go for. Um, and this is just the beginning. We want to build on this. We want more exhibits of this, care, of this, uh, of this character uh, in the future. Uh, we're going to, we'd like to even grow the gallery even more to do that. In our facilities master plan, there's a provision for doubling the size of our, our gallery up to about 7,000 square feet. The board, you're here. You'll hear more about that in, in, uh, in the coming years. We'll be push, pushing for that. Um, but these follow-on exhibits are going to solidify our position as a center for art and culture in the western suburbs. That's where, what we want to be. There are other needs, other ways we meet the needs of this community. I am very, very serious about dual credit. What is dual credit? Those of you in education know what that is. If you're not, if you're not in education, I'll give you a little primer. Dual credit essentially involves in teaching college courses in the high school. A high school teacher takes a college course that has a curriculum that, that is parallel to ours, and they get college credit. It is a great way to get a jump start on college. And there, there are studies that show that for every 100 students that take a dual credit course, 85 of them are going to college. And of those, two thirds are coming to the community college. So it's good for the students, and we want their feet right here in the end. So, it's good for all concerned. It, it, we can, we can, and it's better, it's better than advanced placement, in my view. It's better. Why is it better? Well, advanced placement, you got to take, take a test at the end. You got to score two, one, two, three, four, five. Some schools take three. Some schools take four. Some schools won't take any of them. With dual credit, you have an actual college course that is on a college transcript that can transfer virtually anywhere. 
as I've talked to some of the superintendents, they, they have been very supportive of expanding this program. Also, certificates. We have nearly 180 different certificates. These are shorter courses of study, not amounting to a complete uh, associate's degree. They range from culinary to surgical assistance to paralegal, and there's just a, 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 just a host of different skills that one can learn here on this campus. It can lead to a degree, but doesn't have to. And I see that this is a growth area for us as you, your organizations, need specific skills. If there's something we don't already have, chances are we can fashion it. If you need workers, you'll be able to find them here. Institutional partnerships. We want you on this campus. We need your skills. For example, many of our programs have advisory boards. These are boards of external professionals that come in and tell us what they need for their workers so we can adapt our curriculum to meet that need. We would love to have you involved. Guest lecturers. Um, it's always nice to have somebody from the outside come in and talk about what they see there in the marketplace. Practical skills, bringing them into the classroom. We need your involvement. We also would like to, again, tailor our programs to meet your needs. So I, we don't want you to tell us what you need so we can adapt appropriately. In sum, I believe that the College of DuPage is entering into a renaissance period. This is why I think that. The opportunities that are there right now, the federal legislators told us about that. I've heard them from state legislators as well. There is a need for STEM, there is a need for workforce development. Who is better positioned to deliver that than us? The marketplace needs us, they've said it. We can adapt to, to provide that skill, those skills, the capacity that this marketplace needs. I ask that you do partner with us. You do have a packet um, near your chair. In there, there's, a, there's a, a lot of information about the college, but there's contact information in uh, how you can get back to us and tell us what your needs are. We, this is not a hollow offer. We absolutely want to hear from you. Please let us know. I thank you so much for coming today. Um, it's wonderful to see you all. There's, there's a, a, a cross section of all sorts of different industries here. Um, and it's, it's just wonderful to see you all on campus. We look forward to having you back again soon. And thank you. Thank you, Dr. Caputo, and uh, one, what a wonderful uh, encapsulation of, of everything that makes College of DuPage such an inspiring place for all of us who work here and for everyone who's involved with it. It's, it's really an incredible place. Now, as Dr. Caputo mentioned, the faculty and the quality of the faculty here at COD, we want to welcome two of our highly accomplished professors. Mr. Theo Darden from the Criminal Justice Program, and Mr. Paul Servatka of Meteorology. To give you a little background, Theo Darden has an extensive background as a police officer and supervisor in three different agencies in Wisconsin for more than 15 years. Previously, he received honors as Wisconsin Police Officer of the Year, and he also worked for the Attorney General's Office in the Wisconsin Department of Justice as an education consultant. Paul Servaca is known for his passion to teach students from all walks of life. His name is synonymous with storm chasing nationwide. As a leading expert in the field, he's taught many communities how to build weather preparedness plans. And for more than 25 years, he's developed the college's meteorology program into one of the leading educational platforms in the country. So let's please welcome professors Theo Darden and Paul Servaca to the stage. Severe weather, emergency preparedness. Uh, we're right in the midst of severe weather season right now. I'll take your thunder, no pun intended. Uh, uh, we're right in the midst of uh, severe weather preparedness and many communities around the country are experiencing disasters in which they thought they were prepared for. And so here at the college, we recognize that it's a good time to remind our community partners of the services we have to help you prepare 
for disasters, whether it's weather related or man-made. Uh, with that, uh, we'd also like to remind you that uh, OSHA actually requires organizations to have an emergency action plan, which is really important uh, to assist your employees with understanding evacuations and how to prevent injuries, deaths, and even reduce your liability. And here at the college, we have several courses and programs uh, in criminal justice that could help you uh, do just that. We actually also provide those opportunities for our students who are entering the workforce who will be working for some of your communities, whether as police officers or whether as people who work in the area of homeland security. And so uh, with that, we have uh, several course offerings that you can see here on the screen uh, that goes along with our certificates and degree programs. And so we're really at um, uh, the cutting edge of this. College of DuPage was the first community college in the state to actually put together a Homeland Security degree and certificate to go along with the emergency preparedness. And so uh, for whatever your community needs are in this area, we certainly can assist and provide those opportunities for your personnel and employees. One of the things that we've worked on uh, over the last several years, and this is kind of shown as a, a sort of a paradigm shift and from what the weather community is doing is trying to get information communicated to the people who are using that information. If I were to ask you right now, what's the weather gonna be tomorrow? Almost all of you would go to your cell phone and look at an app that says, here's your temperature and whether it's gonna be sunny. Some of you even have apps that say, it'll rain 37 minutes from now. I uh, hate to burst your bubble, but the meteorological science has not gone to that level. There's just the appearance of preparedness. And so what we're seeing in the community is that people are becoming less and less prepared, less and less knowledgeable about weather and the hazards that come with it because of cell phone technology and the abundance of information that comes at your fingertips. So we're looking at information and we, just like anything else in this modern age, we don't necessarily know what to do with that information. So the paradigm shift from the National Weather Service, who is uh, is the one who is responsible for providing warning and safety information to the public. Uh, we need to start working out ways to communicate. The National or uh, Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, and the National Weather Service have developed what we call a storm ready. It's part of the, what we call the weather ready nation. And College of DuPage is an ambassador to that weather ready nation. We are also the first community college in the United States to become storm ready. And Storm Ready says we have an emergency action plan, we have information that's gonna come in, and we develop ways to protect our people, our students, our, our staff. With this said, we are also thinking we need to do more to the community around us. And so College of DuPage Meteorology has developed information that we give to uh, school districts. We have something called 502 Weather, and that information is tailored to each high school so that there is information that the parents have. Because more than even severe weather and the hazards that are associated with that, we also have winter weather, uh, wind chill advisories, uh, wind chill warnings. And people are looking for ways to find good information and to know what to do with it. I can give you a, a whole bunch of stories of things that didn't happen so well with schools. So we are here to provide schools with information tailored to that individual school, including safety, including preparedness. I work with different school districts, District 211, which is the largest school district in the state. I worked with them to develop a plan. We are also working with businesses, emergency management agencies, to find ways to get better information and to be more prepared. And that's why we work so well with Theo and his department, is because what we have is what affects people daily, every year. You can do forecasts, I can tell you one thing, we're gonna have a natural disaster hit the area sometime soon. That's just going to happen, whether it's floods or tornadoes or major snowstorms or the winter of 2018, 2019. That was a horrible winter. So uh, if you need information, please contact us and we'll work with you uh, totally free of charge just because we think this is an important thing for your uh, students, for your employee, employees, uh, for the people in our community. So thank you very much for having us. Thank you.
Good morning. I'm Diana Martinez. I'm director of the Mackinac Art Center. And I'm Justin Whitty, the curator of the Cleve Carney Art Gallery. So we are here to talk to you a little bit more about the Frida Kahlo exhibition that's coming. And, and to be quite honest, I think this is the most significant cultural event ever to happen in DuPage County. I can't think of anything that is more significant than this in our, in our recent or our past history. Uh, we're talking about the national treasures of Mexico that are coming to Chicago, um, to our area, and, and the opportunity for all of us is pretty incredible, and that's what we really want to excite you about today and tell you about. So I'm gonna hand it over to our amazing curator, Justin Witte, um, to tell you a little bit about the art and what's coming. Uh, Justin's gonna be responsible for actually designing the exhibition that you see when you go through the historical timeline. Justin. So if I told everyone in this room that next year COD was gonna host the Super Bowl, you'd all be pretty excited, right? <laughs> Well, this exhibition is like the Super Bowl of the art world. Um, Frida Kahlo is an amazing artist who often said she painted her reality. And it's impossible to understand her work without understanding that reality. She came of age during the Mexican Revolution. She lived in Mexico City and developed as an artist in a period when it was the center of cultural development in the world. Um, as a young child, she suffered from polio and recovered. At the age of 18, she was in a horrible bus accident when the bus she was riding in was struck by a streetcar, shattering her spine, breaking her leg, causing her a lifetime of surgeries and injury. She was an outspoken advocate of her country. She was an outspoken woman at a time when women were not expected to speak at all. Um, it is for that reason that as each generation discovers her work, her popularity grows. We are getting 26 original works of Frida Kahlo here on campus. This is the envy of the art world. There are only 143 paintings known in existence. We are building 18 months of amazing programming and events around this, and we are transforming the art center into a museum experience. So when the art world comes to the college, we can show them that here at COD, we don't just dream, we do, right? This is a great example of that. Now, Diane's gonna talk to you a little bit more about <clears throat> some of the specifics. So we had a press launch in November, and as you can see um, how the, the news responded to this in the art world, I, my favorite one is art coup, art world coup. We got a coup here. To show you um, an example of, of the level that this sort of art travels to, the world-class <laughs> museums, um, Milan, Budapest, St. Petersburg, Glen I can't Allen. believe Milan's on How there. How about that? <laughs> huh? I said, I can't believe Milan's on there. <laughs> Justin just said, I can't believe Milan got it. <laughs> That's why I like him so much. We're having a lot of fun with this. Do you want to talk about the? Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about what you're actually going to experience in the exhibition. Um, Brian spoke about the expansion of the gallery. We are adding uh, 1,000 square feet to the north end of the gallery, which will allow us to house this exhibition. We're also upgrading the, uh, the security necessary to house treasures such as this. Um, so here's a rendering of that. But um, in addition to changing the cultural landscape of the county and the community, this expansion will also start to change the landscape of the school. Here's one of the potential renderings of what the uh, exterior of the gallery will look like after the expansion, really giving the Art Center an exterior look to all the wonderful things that are already happening on the interior of that space. Inside the Art Center itself, um, like I said before, it's not just going to be the gallery. The gallery will house the works, the actual paintings, but to give that idea of the full history of who Frida was and the world she was living in, the lobby of the Art Center is being transformed into a historical exhibition, which will feature an interactive timeline highlighting the 150 photographs uh, of Frida's life. We'll have recreations of her bed in which she painted when she was uh, confined to her bed many times, recreations of her dresses, um, and also videos, interactive elements to give people a real sense of who this artist was before they see the work. We are gonna take over the entire art center. What I love about our opportunity to do this is if you saw this at the MCA, you would have to go into the museum and walk around and find the exhibition. 
When you walk through the doors of the Mackinac Art Center, it will encompass the entire art center. We're transforming the entire art center into a full experience all the way outside to the back, where we're going to put in a poetry garden. Frida wrote a lot of really inspiring words in her journals and diaries that um, have, have really deep meaning to a lot of people. So we're working with a professor who's actually worked on Frida Kahlo's work at the University of Chicago who wants to help us create a poetry garden outside by the Lakeside Pavilion. Our students are gonna help us in our horticulture department to recreate the garden that she had. And our students in our tech theater department are gonna help us recreate um, this pyramid that she had in her backyard. Another exciting area that we're gonna feature is a children's area. Uh, children actually study Frida Kahlo in grade school and we've been working with District 41 here in Glen Ellen who's given us some insight. But what we didn't know is there is a children's illustrator and author who happens to live in where? Glen Ellen, who's written 40 books on different, uh, different artists. And he writes for Scholastic, which is the, a, a children's educational series. And when he heard about what we were doing, he's like, I wanna help. He's gonna help us design and create our children's area with interactive activities for the family. In terms of the college itself, the faculty has embraced this. They have all sorts of ideas to help integrate Frida Kahlo into the classrooms and how it will work. Healthcare, Mexican history, culinary art appreciation, horticulture, our fashion design department is planning to do a Frida inspired fashion show next year, which I think will be awesome. So the, the faculty, the school, and the community have all really embraced this and, and, and it's exciting to see how everyone's found their part. We will have a year and a half of programming. It's going to actually kick off this weekend with Ballet Hispanico that's coming. Ballet Hispanico is the premier dance company out of New York. When you look at the year long of programming, um, it's pretty impressive. Ballet Folklorico de Mexico is coming. We have a children's tour, Sugar Skull, that's coming. If you saw Coco, you'll love Sugar Skull. We'll have a film series. We'll have lectures and all sorts of programming throughout the year. I'm very excited about Frida Fest. That's coming in September. We're partnering with the West Chicago Mexican Cultural Council to help us with this event. We're having Ballet Folklorico from Aurora, our friends in Aurora, that's um, our very own dance troupe from there. We have a mariachi uh, group, Monumental, that is um, actually, if you ever go to the Bulls game and you've seen the mariachis there, they'll be here. It'll be a free outdoor festival for everyone on September 8th here at the Lakeside Pavilion to kick off the year of celebration. And I'm very excited to announce that Rick Bayless has agreed to be our gala host. We are having a gala uh, because we have to raise a lot of money, obviously, to bring this here. Um, uh, we have a host committee of people in the community. For $5,000, you can be a host. You get to go to the gala, first look. And, and truly, you are investing in one of the greatest cultural adventures here for DuPage County. And you're not just investing in something that's an art show. You're investing in something that's gonna impact our community tenfold. We believe at minimum, at absolute minimum, when I showed the numbers to Beth Mar Marchetti from the DuPage Convention and Visitors Bureau, she said minimum 13 million. I said, that's too much, let's bring it down. I don't wanna overpromise. However, Justin and I went to Brooklyn for two days to do research on the exhibition we saw there that doesn't even have one tenth the amount of the art we're gonna have. They told us it broke every record they've ever had. We know that we'll bring in, at minimum, 150,000 people through here. That reflects an eight million in economic and tourism um, impact, not to College of DuPage, but to Wheaton, to Glen Ellen, to Bloomingdale, to Aurora, wherever people happen to stay. The Visitors Bureau is already promoting this as far as China because we know people will not only travel nationally, they will travel internationally to come see the show. We're hoping the community will engage this. I have to take my hat off to the city of Wheaton. They have embraced this and already started monthly meetings to get people going um, and, and have themed some of their events already. They've done an amazing job. Glen Ellen is getting on board. It's very exciting. But I really think 
This will help everyone in the whole district. People will go and stay in Oak Brook and in Naperville and all over. So everybody has an opportunity to benefit from the tourism that this will bring. These are some of the partners who we've signed on already. Um, there's many more, but I don't have time because I'm getting the wrap it up symbol. <laughs> so if you want to hear more about it, please look in your packet. There's a little pamphlet for you, and we also uh, have a little tote bag for you. Thank you so much for all your support, and we hope to see you at Frida 2020. Thanks, Diana and Justin. The, the Frida uh, exhibit and year-long events are going to be incredible. And by the way, a quick plug coming up this summer. Didn't feel much like summer this morning, but if you've never been to one of the Lakeside Pavilion concerts that happen right here on the COD campus, uh, on the beautiful grassy area behind the MAC, whole series of concerts again this summer on Thursday, Friday nights, everything from pop and rock to jazz and blues, and uh, there's even a Latin jazz night too. So it's going to be incredible. That's this summer, and I think everything's going to be available online at atthemac.org to find out about all of that. Well, at this time, uh, we're going to move on and recognize, before we're done, a uh, couple of organizations that are doing great work in the community. And first off, I uh, want to acknowledge the work of SCARES. In 1990, Kay McKean had an idea to teach school children about recycling and other earth-friendly activities. This seed of an idea, schools and communities assisting each other to recycle and provide composting education, took root and grew into SCARES, an award-winning environmental education and nonprofit recycling agency dedicated to creating sustaining, sustainable communities. For more than 25 years, SCARES has been engaging students through innovative programs. We are proud of our continuing partnership and pleased to be a part of the extraordinary accomplishments realized by SCARES. We acknowledge the agency's dedication to our community and the environment by honoring SCARES with the Community Promise Award, presented this day in recognition of significant contributions and commitment to the people of Community College District 502. Congratulations to SCARES. Wow, pretty fun, thank you. I get 30 seconds, so you know me, it's about four days worth of talking. First of all, thank you very, very much. I don't know how many of you were in uh, middle school when John Kennedy was president, and he said, every person can make a difference and every person should try. And this Promise Award is kind of interesting because I decided at that moment that I would make my promise to this country that we all love and share and enjoy. Um, I have an amazing board right here. Five of our board members are here. If they could stand up for just a second. And my daughter is here as well. If you could stand up, Beverly. I have the great, great privilege to do something that I care about every single day. And when you all were talking about partnerships, I quickly was jotting down partnerships with COD. Um, we employ two of your students every semester. Some of your students have gone on to earn internships through us. Some of your professors come to our agency to get free supplies for students who can't afford school supplies. I get to work with some of the amazing professors that you have at this school, Dr. Shamily Sandiford and Dan Scholes, and um, just so many wonderful teachers who care about the students here in our community and care about their future. We are so lucky here in DuPage County to have COD. I feel it's a privilege to be a partner with you on so many levels. Your care organization just had a, ba a bake sale for us. We've worked together on pumpkin composting. There are so many projects we've done together. We all need to put in our best effort. Our students are the future, and that future needs to be healthy, clean water, clean air, healthy soil. So far, teachers have chosen over 7 million books from our agencies. If you have books at home that you are not reading, textbooks, storybooks, 
novels. We would love to have those books. Teachers have chosen more than seven million books. We filled libraries. Right now we're working on reestablishing the library at the DuPage County Jail with books. So we really want to get those books reused. Books, of course, come from our trees. And if we can keep them out of the landfill and help somebody with literacy. Maybe you've heard about the new literacy at the laundromat programs that we've been working on to give kids who are attending laundromats and sit there for two and a half hours literacy books that they can bring home to their families. There are so many opportunities for each of us to care for each other. Thank you so much for this award, and I look forward to lots more partnerships. Thank you. Thanks again, and congratulations, Kay. Next up, we'd like to acknowledge the work of DuPage Medical Group. As the largest independent multi-specialty physicians group in the state, DuPage Medical Group provides innovative quality care to more than 2 million patients annually at over 100 locations in the western suburbs. DuPage Medical Group motto, We Care For You, goes beyond office visits and hospital stays. Staff are committed to giving of their time, talents, and expertise for the benefit of those less fortunate. College of DuPage enjoys a robust partnership with DuPage Medical Group as the presenting sponsor of the COD Food Truck Rally and Sunset 5K. They've brought nationwide recognition to the event, provided on-site health services, and donated nearly $30,000 towards COD student scholarships. We acknowledge this sustaining commitment to our students by honoring DuPage Medical Group with the Community Promise Award, presented this day in recognition of significant contributions and commitment to the people of Community College District 502. Congratulations. never received a plaque before, so thank you for that. Uh, on behalf of DuPage Medical Group, I'm honored to be here today so to accept the Community Promise Award. As a proud and active member of communities we serve, DMG is committed to supporting the College of DuPage and other local partners who provide many of the resources and activities throughout the year that allow the members of our communities to thrive and maintain a healthy, well-balanced lifestyle. We look forward to participating as a sponsor for the Food Truck Rally and Sunset 5K again this fall. It is fam family friendly community events like these that enable us to really connect with and make a difference within the community. DuPage Medical Group's focus has always been centered on providing access to the best care, resources, and support possible. Uh, we look forward to continuing to partner with organizations like College of DuPage in, in the future. Thank you. And again, congratulations to DuPage Medical Group. Thank you for joining us today. You know, we've got one minute left, so I'm going to keep the announcements to about 60 seconds. We appreciate your support and hope that you'll continue to partner with us on the various college-wide and community initiatives to help us build an even stronger District 502. A quick note, if you want to take a, a tour of our library here at COD, it's very close by, and if you meet out in the lobby, we'll have uh, some tours taking place of our incredible library. And as you depart, this green folder, please remember to take uh, this folder with you from College of DuPage. It's packed with great information about our campus, upcoming events and festivities and initiatives, and there's even a Frida bag in here too, so you don't want to miss that. Um, but make sure to take the green folder with you and check everything out. Thank you all for coming to this community leadership breakfast, and have a great day.